Good afternoon, Facebook Live. This is Robin Kerbigato. Welcome to today. It is going to be an amazing day. You are going to get some more information as Holy Spirit brings a strength from on high, hallelujah, to encourage you, to strengthen you, to cause you to know who you are in Christ Jesus. Amen. So as you join on, saints of God, you be super hopeful and excited. Hey, Jenny Gailey, God bless you. Thank you for joining in. Hey, Christina, God bless you. Hey, Kelly, awesome to have you here, sister. It is going to be an amazing day. Y'all will super love this teaching. We are doing Ephesians 5, 14. Amen. Awake, awake, oh sleeper. Woo! It's going to be absolutely amazing. So as you join on, you be super expected. Amen. Hey, Chelsea, God bless you. Hey, Sarah. So good to see you on here. Thank you, Sarah. I received that. Hey, Sandy. God bless you. Thank you for joining in. And I also, thank you, Kelly. Thank you. I received that blessing. Hey, Dina. So good to see you, Dina Woolley. I'll be seeing you Wednesday, Dina. Amen. It is so awesome to be here. So as we get started, let's enter into the Word of God in prayer. Amen. Let me get my recorder on. Father God, we thank you for the power of of Holy Spirit. We thank you, God, that you are faithful, hallelujah, to bring strength, to bring courage, to bring power. As you give us wisdom, hallelujah, and cause us to know who we are in Christ Jesus in order that we are lifted up in a greater strength and a greater wisdom from on high which is a demonstration of the kingdom of heaven. We thank you, God, that you are going to strengthen us today as we are gathered in the name of Christ Jesus and we glorify that name in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, my goodness. Are you super excited? We are getting deeper and deeper into the subconscious, into our self-image. We are going to look at the issues of life in which God is going to bring freedom. He's going to bring deliverance. Hey, Carol. Hey, Kathy. Love you. Hey, Lori. So awesome to have you on here. God is going to bring deliverance. I'm telling you, Holy Spirit has been showing me areas in which the body of Christ Jesus is going to be set free. So get buckled up and get ready as we move forward. Amen. And so our scripture today, our main scripture, is going to be in the text of Ephesians 5. We're going to start in verse 8, and then we're going to go to verse 14. Amen. So let's look at verse 8. And we're still talking about, and we will be talking about still for a long time, thoughts and emotions. Thoughts and emotions. It's about the mind and the body connection. If y'all have not seen my Facebook lives for the last three months, I talk about thoughts and emotions, Romans 12, 1 and 2, and about the mind and the body connection. God is going to bring us a greater awareness. The last thing that God has had me introduce in the past week and a half to two weeks is about the enemy's hypnosis. And what I brought up in the last broadcast is when we are introduced to the lie of the enemy, that is merely at that moment to our soul that is merely a suggestion. Now think about this because this is where we're going to get into greater understanding. Let me grab, oh my goodness, I didn't grab my book that has all my definitions in it. Hold on one second. Here it is right here. My book with all the definitions in it because I wrote them down today. I wanted to be able to get them to you today at a faster pace because my internet has been kind of on and off. It's just been really crazy with the connection services here. So we are looking at the mind and the body connection, and we are looking at, first and foremost, we're going to look at the lie of the enemy. The lie of the enemy is introduced to your mind because this is the place of strongholds. The strongholds are set up in the first brain. The enemy's lies are introduced to your brain as a suggestion. They're given to you to take on as a suggestion. They are not truth, but they are given to you to take on as a suggestion. Hold on one second. I apologize. My male woman is here. Hold on one second. Okay, I 
I've got packages. I've got packages. So sorry. I had. I just. I did. I did not like for my a postal woman to have to go up all these flights of stairs because we did not have an elevator, and so I try to usually save her the trouble and run downstairs when I hear her coming. And so I was trying to do my best to get that so she wouldn't have to walk all the way upstairs. So now let's enter to God's plan, Amen. Here we go. So the word suggests. Are you ready? Because all hypnotism is is a state of high suggestibility. Some people have higher states of suggestibility than other people because it is in that theta wave. What is a theta wave? It is when you're about to go to sleep and when you're still awake, but you're trying to go to sleep, that restful mode where you're about to nod off, that is the theta wave and that is the wave of high suggestibility. And think about it, Saints of God, because the Word of God says, do not let the sun, right? Do not let the sun go down on your anger, right? Do not let the sun go down on your anger. Now, this verse is Ephesians 4, 26. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. Why is that? Because when you're about to go to sleep, you're in the state of high suggestibility, and in that state of high suggestibility, the theta wave in your brain is at work. And that is the area in which suggestions are just like attached. They're going to attach to your brain, your subconscious mind in that theta wave, which is when you're about to go to sleep, when you're still awake, but you're drifting off to sleep. And the exercises that I am doing with the women that I am coaching about their self-image is interjecting into that area of the daytime, or can I say the nighttime, where God has given me a recipe for your self-image. And it will also be in the book. And it is absolutely phenomenal. And the women that are doing their homework are seeing massive results. Amen, Amber Tucker. Amen, all of y'all. Dina Michelle Woolley. And so what God has shown me as I've done more study in neuroscience, and we're going to get into it today with a wake awake, a sleeper, is there's a reason why God laid out everything that there is in scripture, right? And so not going to bed in anger, don't let the sun go down on your anger. What happens when you go to bed, you're entering that theta wave. If you take your problems, or can we say your anger with you to bed, and you hit that theta wave, that is when you are given over to high suggestibility in your subconscious mind, and that is where the lie of the enemy will take root. Where do we see this? We see this with Cain, where God tells him that sin is crouching at his door, and I actually wrote a note on that. That is Genesis 4, 7, where God is telling Cain Sin is crouching at your door, but you must master it. You must overcome it, right? But we, when we look at Genesis 4, 7, in fact, let's look at Genesis 4, 7 briefly. And let's look at that for just a second. The scripture says in the Amplified Classic, If you do well, you will, will you not be accepted? And so what is this about? Cain's self-image. It's not about the image that God has about Cain. It's about the image that Cain has about himself. And because he's jealous of his brother, sin is now crouching at his door. So the Amplified Classic, Genesis 4, 7 says, If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin crouches at your door. Its desire is for you, but you must master it. Do you see the saints of God? And so when we see this also with Ephesians, let's look at Ephesians 4, in fact, and let's go to this scripture, amen? Ephesians 4, because we're really going to get into waking up. Awake, awake, O sleeper. Why is it awake, awake, O sleeper? Because God has been showing me that the strongholds of the enemy those strongholds are a hypnosis to the enemy's lie. 
in which many people are asleep. For those of y'all who have God's Firewall Healing of the Soul series on Amazon, you see where I talk about different facets of the soul. I get into the book of Jeremiah, uh, Nehemiah, the book of Nehemiah with healing of the soul. And I talk about the different facets of the soul. And I deal with different gates of Jerusalem and show how God gave me a blueprint from my past degrees, which I did psychotherapy, outpatient psychotherapy, bastards and masters in social work. And I was always intrigued about the soul, especially when I worked with people who disassociated. I myself share about my own disassociation. What does that mean? It means where you totally forget that something happens and you totally block it out. Well, isn't it interesting? Because not only does our brain do that in different respects, which is actually God's mercy, in order to heal us, to make us whole, where the light pierces the darkness, John 1, 5. <clears throat> and as that light pierces the darkness, the darkness of the enemy is exposed and it is unreceptive to the light and it flees. Amen. Because the light brings an abundance of life in all that it touches. Amen. If we could look at light as touching, light as touching, you see this light touching my face, we can't see it in the natural, right? <clears throat> but in the quantum physics realm, which I know very well, <clears throat> and I actually teach on this area in Clawing and Gnawing, as well as in some of my other books, but I teach about the wave particle duality theory, which means everything is matter, but everything is also a wave. And so we see this demonstrated through Louis de Broglie that did the wave particle duality theory that almost was looked at as full tomfoolery, but Einstein said he was one of the most brilliant mans given over to science. And so they just gave him this awesome award. But he said that everything is a wave and it's a particle. What does it mean? You see me. I am matter, right? I am composed of matter. <clears throat> but he specifically demonstrated the wave particle duality theory with electrons. And we can also see this demonstrated even with photons where you see this light hidden, hitting my face. And although you can't see particles hitting my face, photons, they're hitting my face. They're just so super small. You need an electron microscope to see it, but it's touching me. And so when the light of Christ goes into bondages that are in the first brain, it is in neural pathways that have gotten together and made agreement to the suggestion of the enemy's law that have now given you a false reality to which you are hypnotized through. So watch this. Everything that you perceive out of that false reality, or can we say stronghold, or let's go further and let, let's explain this as a hypnosis to where the enemy has totally sold you a false bill of goods that you now have agreed to, and that becomes your day. That becomes your future. That becomes your tomorrow. And you're living in the stronghold of the enemy's lie. You are totally asleep to the truth. Now, you might be thinking, Robin, that would never happen to me. I will tell you from what the Holy Spirit is showing me that more than not, Christians are asleep to bondages within their person, their temple, that they have no clue about. But in this hour, as we go into 2020, God is going to wake you up. You're going to see the abundance of the word hypnosis. When I say hypnosis, that refers to the enemy's suggestions, the enemy's lies, which have now sold us a false reality. And we will fight tooth and toenail for this false reality. Why? Because it has given us the impression of chemical messages, which is also known as hormones. And those chemical messages, whether they feel bad or not, it doesn't matter. They're chemical messages. So instead of looking at them, as hormones, 
We have to look at these chemical messages such as stress, anxiety, fear. We can see all of this. We don't want to feel it, but these are messages literally from the enemy that own our body. And our mind is struggling because our mind is asking, why do we feel afraid? Why do we feel anxious? Why do we feel stressed out? That's not that's a fire fire truck that you hear in the background. Why do we feel why do we feel fear? And it is because our body is familiar with this emotion. Our body is familiar with these chemicals. So as a result, we now become addicts of these emotions. Even though they feel bad, we become addicts because these emotions are a part of our personal reality, or can I say, our personality. When we come to Christ Jesus, we're given a new spirit. Our spirit man is born from above, and now we work out our salvation in fear and in trembling because we have a new spirit. That spirit communicates with Holy Spirit. We're born from above, we're sons and daughters of God. We now become a temple of Holy Spirit. And so Holy Spirit, with our spirit man, are working out our salvation where? On our soul, which is our heart here and our mind. It's the mind and body connection. And so when I say soul, scripture also says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he, right? As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. That's Proverbs 23, 7. And we also did that scripture in the last book when I talked about Tesla and Rev 22, 2. That is a very incredible deep book, but we're going deeper still when we talk about the mind of Christ. And we're talking about the mind and the body connection. And the body represents our emotions. It is the seat of our feelings, the seat of our emotions. And so when our emotions are out of sync with the fruit of Holy Spirit, which is peace, love, kindness, long-suffering, patience, thinking the best of others, right? That is the fruit of Holy Spirit. And so when our emotions are out of sync with Holy Spirit fruit, there is confusion in the mind. Because why? We know these scriptures. And these scriptures are telling us, be anxious for nothing, Luke 12, right? Be anxious for nothing. And our mind hears that scripture, but our emotions are being consecrated as holy unto God. And so when we consecrate our body, we're consecrating our members, our faculties, our emotions. And we're saying we're bought and paid for with a price. We are not our own, right? We're not our own. So we are who? Gods. We are gods. Hold on one second. I love getting these scriptures. We're bought and paid for with a price. 1 Corinthians 6, 20. 1 Corinthians 7, 23. We are not our own. We're bought and paid for with a price. And so our mind does not want change. Our mind is used to these chemical emotions that are in our body. It's used to these messages, even though they're unpleasant, but it tells us we're still alive and it's all that we know. And so your mind is going to fight tooth and toenail to resist change. You have to understand this. This is why 1 Corinthians 2 talks about in verses 13 through 16 that the Word of God is what? Spiritually discerned. It is folly to the natural mind. And so when we look at our thoughts and emotions, and we consecrate our body, Romans 12, 1, as we consecrate our body as holy, then we can have the transformed, changed mind to where we see ourselves in the image 
2 Corinthians 3.18, the likeness of Christ Jesus. And so let's go a little further. I don't want to do too much today, but what the new book, Mindfulness, the Mind of Christ, Living a Meditated Life, is going to be about is your self-image. Again, the new ministry God has me doing in coaching in health and wellness coaching is table it, which is Joel 2.26, about coming to eat and be filled in plenty and satisfied with the food that God gives us. And we no longer know shame. We don't know the reproach of the enemy, the carnal nature, because we're being transformed into the image of God's glory, 2 Corinthians 3.18. And so the book is about your self-image. When you read this book, you are going to get a total transformation about your self-image. Because based on how you see yourself is how you first and foremost see this word. It's how you see God. It's how you see Jesus. It's how you see Holy Spirit. It's how you see your spouse. It's how you see your children. It's how you see everybody based on your self-image. And so table it, the IT stands for image texturized. And that word texturized comes from Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the thoughts that I have for you, says the Lord. Those, that word thoughts in Hebrew is machashaba, and it means device, machine, invent, thoughts. It comes from the Hebrew word hashab, which means to interpenetrate as plaiting a girl's hair. And it also means texture. And so God's thoughts become texture. They become real. Hebrews 11, 1 through 3. Faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And so when we're talking about your self-image, we're talking about your faith. So let's do this equals, equals, equals. Here's your math equation for today of algebra for the soul. What is algebra? I talk about algebra in my book, God's Follow School, the Prophet Session 4, the spirit of knowledge where it's doing the anatomy of the brain with the spirit of knowledge. And I talk about the parabola, which is algebra. But this is what's interesting because the word algebra comes from the uh, Arabic word Jabir, which means, are you ready? To restore what is missing. To restore what is missing. And if that's not enough of what algebra comes from, Jabir, to restore what is missing, it also means to equate likeness with like. In other words, this equals this. They are alike. Is that not powerful? And so your algebra lesson for the soul today is soul equals self-image. Self-image equals faith. Now let me do that again. Your soul equals the self-image. Your self-image equals your faith. Because 1 Peter 1, 6 and 7 what is being tested in the soul? What is being tested? Our faith. So where is our faith? Our faith is growing and enlarging by Holy Spirit, communicating and teaching our spirit, which teaches our soul by Holy Spirit. Our soul is growing strong in spirit or can I say, strong in faith. What does this look like? It looks like Luke 180. John the Baptist grew strong in spirit. Jo Luke 240. Jesus grew strong in spirit. And this is when they were very young. And so when we see this transformation process, our self-image 2 Corinthians 3.18, as we go from glory to glory, is growing strong in spirit. Why? Because we have the knowledge of God's glory. And so what do we want? We want more of His Spirit. 
Blessed are those who are hungry and thirsty for righteousness, for they shall be filled. We are the temple of Holy Spirit. So now let's look at Ephesians 4, and let's look at about the sun going down on our anger. Amen. Uh, Ephesians 4, where it talks about the sun going down our, on our anger. In fact, let us look at one thing. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. We're looking at that scripture today, and we are going to be blown away. Amen. Blown away. Woo! Ephesians 4 26. So let's look at Ephesians 4 26 before we go to Ephesians 5 because this plays in with that. Amen. Ephesians 4 26. Scripture says, in fact, let's do verse 25. Let's do verse 20. Let's do verse 23. And be constantly renewed. Here it is. In the spirit of your mind. What? I just want to run around. Is that not what Holy Spirit just brought to this teaching? Oh my goodness. There it is. Is that not powerful? The spirit of the mind. That is us growing strong in spirit. In fact, let's start at verse 22. Verse 22. Strip yourselves of your in fact let's start in verse 21 assuming that you have already have really heard him jesus and been taught by him christ as truth is in jesus embodied and personified in him strip yourselves of your former nature put off and discard your old unrenewed self which characterized your previous manner of life and becomes corrupt through lusts and desires that spring forth delusion, spring from delusion. Do you hear that? That spring from delusion. Listen to that, saints of God, because that is the hypnosis of the enemy. Listen to this. Strip yourselves of your former nature. Put off and discard your old, unrenewed self, which characterized your previous manner of life, and becomes corrupt through lusts and desires that spring forth from delusion. So let us go to that word. Is this not powerful? Be constantly renewed in the spirit of your mind, having a fresh mental and spiritual attitude is this not phenomenal because god is telling us that in our soul in our heart and our mind we grow strong in spirit by having are you ready because didn't i tell you that holiness as god showed me in the last broadcast was a condition by the blood of jesus we're made holy and it's also an emotion so if it's an emotion, guess what it will also be? An attitude. Is that not phenomenal? It will also be an attitude. And so he is telling us that we are going to have a fresh attitude. Look at this again. I love how the Amplified Classic puts it. And verse 23 of Ephesians 4. And be constantly renewed in the spirit of your mind, having a fresh mental and spiritual attitude. Now let's look at the word attitude. Amen, Jenny. The word attitude is a noun. It means a settled way of thinking or feeling about someone or something. So we're talking about with attitude, what is it? There's feelings. Ding, 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 ding. There's emotions. Woo! There's an experience. Can we call that holy? Do you see the saints of God? And so now God is dissecting with us what is the emotion of holiness when we have the condition. The condition right here is represented by stripping ourselves 
of our former unrenewed mind, that carnal nature. Strip ourselves of it so we have a process. We have a role to play in this. Amen. That is revealing to us Romans 12, 1. Make a decisive dedication over your body. Strip yourself of your old emotions. You can't live in an old attitude. You have to have a fresh attitude. And that fresh attitude is the result of you experiencing holiness. Holiness is a condition and it's an emotion. And that's what God is driving home to his church because it's always been an enigma. What is holiness? It is such a mystery. It's such an enigma. We don't have a texture to it in our image. And God is bringing us that texture. He's bringing us our image. And he is saying, this is what holiness feels like. It is clean. It is pure. Woo! Hallelujah. And so then we see that delusions that the old self the unrenewed self spring forth out of delusions. Do y'all see that? In Ephesians 4.22. So let's look at that word delusion in 4.22. And that word, oops, I'm in Ephesians 5. Ephesians 4.22. We're looking at the word delusion. That word in the King James Version says, according to the deceitful of lust. So let's look at this word lust. It's epithemua. Epithemua. And it means desire and lust, a longing for. This comes from the word epithemio. And the word epithemio, think about that. Epi indicates something that is occurring, like epigenetics. Epigenetics is a new state of genetics. Epi itself means upon, above. So let's look at this epigenetics. Let's look at epigenetics of the soul, in other words, right here. So this word attitude, as we're looking at it, we're looking at it springing forth from our desire. So the delusions of the enemy's hypnosis cause us to desire or give meaning or be addicted to emotions in our body that are not of God. And these emotions cause us to be asleep. And so this gr Greek word from which epithemio comes from, it means to covet. It means to desire. It means to lust after. I did the word epi just a minute ago, which means upon. And the word thymus, and I think of the word, the, uh, the thymus, the thymus gland in the body. Is that not powerful? The thymus gland, because it's thumos, epithumos. Epithumos, this word means to be impassioned. Oh my goodness. Thymos means passion, indignation, fierceness, breathing of breath, very hard. Do you not see this? God is saying that from our emotions, from our passions, from this factory of messages, springs forth desires of this world. Is that not powerful? And that is why God says, be over your emotions because your emotions, the seed of your emotions are where your desires spring forth. Guard the heart diligent, diligently. Proverbs 23, 7. Guard the heart diligently for out of it come the issues of life. Or can we say the passions inside of your emotions? And that can lead you to corruption. Now let's look at scripture here as scripture talks about because we're getting into the anger and we're going to get into Ephesians 5, awake, awake, a sleeper. Verse 24, and put on the new nature, put on the new nature, the regenerate self created in God's image. Woo! There it is. 
self-image. See, you're going to find out that we were created, 2 Corinthians 3, 18, as we with an unbelt face, behold us in a mirror. What are we staring at when we're looking in a mirror? We're looking at what? Our image. We're looking at our image. As we behold the glory of God, we are being changed into that image from glory to glory. And so let's look at 2 Corinthians 3.18 as the glorified nature of Christ. So as we are standing here and we're looking at a mirror at our image, we're looking at a mirror of our glorified nature, the image of Christ in us. Amen? The hope of glory. Is that not amazing? And here we see God talking about, here it is, put on your image. Put on the new nature created in God's image. It is about your self-image. So soul equals self-image, which for us is our image in Christ, equals faith. Because when you feel really good about yourself, what happens? You have good emotions. You have confidence. You have hope. You have belief. You have faith. Is that not amazing? So what is being tested? Our faith. Our friendship to God. That no matter what we think about our self-image, if it's poor, God is able to redeem us. God is able to deliver us. And God himself is able to transform and change us. Amen. And so let's look at verse 24. And put on the new nature, the regenerate self created in God's image. God-like in true righteousness. And here it is. Holiness. Woo! Our new nature is holiness. Amen. Therefore, rejecting all falsity and being done now with it, let everyone express the truth with his neighbor. For we are all parts of one body. And members of one another. Here it is, verse 26. When angry, do not sin. Do not ever let the wrath of your exasperation, your fury, or indignation last until the sun goes down. Now we're about to get in Ephesians 5. Why is that? God knows what happens to our brain. It's likened unto Cain when sin was crouching at his door. And God said, you must master it. Did Cain allow the sun to go down on his anger? Did he allow, allow the lie, the suggestion of the enemy to enter into his sleep? Because remember, right before you go to sleep, that is when your brain wave, the theta wave, is very wide open to make you susceptible to suggestion. And so, so instead of allowing the enemy's lies right before we go to sleep, instead we eat the truth. We eat what God says about our image and we take that into our sleep so that that is what penetrates our subconscious because the word suggest is made of two words. Sub, from below. Jarir, which means to bring forth. Two words. Sub, from below. And Jarir, which means to bring forth. So the word suggest indicates bringing forth from below. Or can we say bringing forth from your subconscious? That is where suggestions take root. They grow is in your subconscious. And that is why 2 Corinthians 10 tells us, take every thought captive and bring it unto submission. Don't let it go below. Bring it unto submission to what? The Word. To Christ. Refute that argument immediately. Because if you don't, then guess where it's going to go? It's going to go sub suggest. 
it's going to go below into your subconscious. And then it's just a suggestion, a lie. But in time, if it is not dealt with, that suggestion will turn into a stronghold into oppression. And so now this is, and I don't have much time left, so I'm going to hurry it up. But that is the foundation of now where we're going, amen? So you get an idea. So let's look at Ephesians 5. And we're going to look at Ephesians 5 starting in verse 14. Verse 14. Well, in fact, before we get to 14, let's look at verse 8. For once you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. Lead the lives of those native born to the light. For the fruit, the effect, the product of the light or the spirit consists in every form of kindly goodness, a brightness of heart, and trueness of life and try to learn in your experience what is pleasing to the Lord. Let your lives be consistent, constant proofs of what is most acceptable to him. Take no part in, have no fellowship with the fruitless deeds and enterprises of darkness, but instead let your lives be so in contrast as to expose and reprove and convict them. For it is a shame even to speak or mention the things that such people practice in secret. Now that should be a dead giveaway right there. Don't talk about all the dirty things that people practice in secret. Don't give word to it. Amen. But when anything is exposed and reproved by the light, it is made visible Clear. Do you hear that, saints of God? When it is exposed to the light, it is made visible. Clear. When it comes up from the subconscious, it is made clear. Amen. There, uh, It is made clear. And where everything is visible and clear, woo, there is light. Woo. Do you see this? So God brings the issue of darkness in which we have not had our mind transformed. But we are seeking the fresh anointing. We are seeking grace. We desire to have our strongholds destroyed by the anointing of the Word of God and Holy Spirit. And as Holy Spirit brings knowledge of the Word, as He brings the truth of the Word, and we experience cleanness and holiness, hallelujah, then everything that was once a hindrance, everything that was a lie is a lie. Every suggestion from the pit of hell is exposed and the darkness flees and there is nothing but clarity, clearness, truth, light, holiness. Woo! Hallelujah. Do you hear that, saints of God? So God brings up the suggestion for the subconscious and he exposes the lie for what it is. And now the truth is made known. John 8, 32. You shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. Amen. So let's look at this in verse 14. Therefore he says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead. And Christ shall shine and make day dawn upon you and give you light. Look carefully then how you walk. Live purposely and worthily and accurately, not as the unwise and witless, but as wise, sensible, intelligent people, making the very most of the time, buying up each opportunity because the days are evil. Do you see the saints of God? So our focus here is Ephesians 5. Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall shine, make his light dawn upon us. That is Isaiah 60, verse 1. Arise from the place of prostration 
and what circumstances have kept you. Oh my goodness. Because what are we talking about? Your self-image. Only your self-image can make you feel defeated in your circumstance. Now that is worth the weight in gold and signing on to this broadcast today just for that one thing. Listen to that again, saints of God. Only your self-image can put you under depression, oppression, prostration in your circumstance. Your circumstance doesn't do that to you. Your circumstance is merely an event. It's only an event. It is your self-image in that circumstance that causes you to be confounded. Think about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He is being lied, spit upon. He is being accused falsely. But guess what? It did not change his self-image. He knew no matter what the circumstance said about him and what others lied about him and accused him of falsely, it did not change who he is. He is the Son of God, and it did not change his image. Likewise, that is what it means for us. We are immovable. We are planted, rooted, grounded securely in the love of Christ to know our image, which is the love of God. And when we know our image, no circumstance can cause chaos. No circumstance can cause us to feel oppressed because that is your emotional seat. And that emotional seat, when you know your condition is holy, your emotional experience is holiness. Woo! It is a spirit attitude of Holy Spirit in your mind where Holy Spirit has taken over your mind with the mind of Christ, the intellect of Christ, where His peace surpasses your understanding. Woo! Hallelujah. Glory to God. So here is Isaiah 60. Look at this. It is so, so powerful. And then we're going to get into some Greek words and then we'll be over. Isaiah 60. I love how the Amplified Classic puts it. It's so beautiful. Arise from the depression and prostration in what circumstances have kept you. Rise to a new life. Shine. Be radiant with the glory of the Lord for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. So let's look at a couple of Greek words. And then I'm going to give you a small molecular biology lesson today. Amen. It's going to be super fun. So the word awake here in Ephesians 5.14 is egg aero. Egg aero. And it means the idea. Are you ready? Awake means the idea of collecting your faculties collecting your faculties in other words be in control over your emotions because if you're not in control of your emotions guess what's going to happen the lie the suggestion hypnosis being asleep because i'm telling you when holy spirit reveals this to you oh my goodness you're going to be so blown away because many of you Many, I've, 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 I've confessed mine where Holy Spirit showed me mine from the Father. I am telling you, you are going to find out there are places in your life, in your mind, in your memories, where you have been hypnotized with the lies of Satan and God's about to wake you up to a new reality. And this reality is called favored. It's called blessed. It's called living in the promise. It's called being seated with Christ Jesus. It is called being blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm. It is manifest in your soul. It is manifest in your self-image. When you wake up from the hypnotic state of the suggestion of Satan in your circumstance, and you arise 
and you shine because you know the light. Clarity, woo! Truth, hallelujah, has exposed the darkness and the darkness flees, amen? And you have a promise of the truth and that light is the power of Holy Spirit. The power of the word in you, amen? This word slip, sleeper is the Greek word kathudo, kathudo, and it means to lie down, to be asleep. This comes also when we look at the word where G God tells us in verse 14, 15, and in Ephesians 5, God tells us, be circumspect, be circumspect, because the days are evil. God tells us to be circumspect, and that word circumspect come, is the Greek word akribos, and I think of a crib. It's A-K-R-I-B-O-S. A crib. A crib. Your crib. Your life is being circumspect. This word actually comes from the Greek root word, which means to be straight. I pray that all the time. I pray that and I tell everybody that I know that I coach about being circumspect. And that circumspect indicates to be cautious. It comes from two Latin words, circum, which means around and about, and spacere, which means to look. So look at this, saints of God. No longer are your lenses a stronghold about you of your self-image from what you see everything, rejection. So you see everything and everyone in every circumstance as rejecting you Stirring chemical emotions, owning your emotions, and you're not in control. And God is saying, be circumspect. I'm about to come about you and around you by the power of Holy Spirit, he says. And you're about to look. You're about to get new eyesight. That is Job 42. Job 42. Before I only knew you in my hearing. But now, hallelujah, Job says, but now I see you. Is that not amazing? We see that actually in when Job is talking to God. We see that in verse 5. Before I knew you only in my hearing, my self-image had lenses on it. And the lenses said that I was cursed. I was forsaken. The, the lenses on it had fear. And that which I feared has come upon me because it's how I see. Do you see the saints of God? But when grace comes around you, when love comes around you, when holiness is upon you and fills you, hallelujah, you have new lenses and you look at your circumstance and you don't see defeated, but you see I'm about to be blessed. Because I'm in the likeness of his image. I'm set up for a turnaround because I'm made in the likeness of his image. Do you see this, saints of God? Now, this is where we're going to end. And this is your molecular biology that goes on with your neurons. This is your lesson today. Amen. We're looking at neuroscience. And so, one of the ways your neurons in your brain, in your head, Communicate, of course, three frequencies, but those frequencies are caused because of ionic reactions. What is an ion? It is an element that's on your periodic table, your elements table. It is an element that has a charge. Whether it's negative or positive, it still has a charge, and that charge makes it ionic, where it gives it power. And so the two main, well, there's really four, but I'm just going to really talk about one main neuro, one main chemical ion in your brain, in your neuron, because you get chemical electricity from ions. The way that you get electricity in your brain is from ions, like a battery. You have a positive into the battery, you also have a negative end. That is a great example of an ion. An ion either has a positive charge or it has a negative charge. 
And so when your neurons are stimulated, what's happening, our chemicals are operating within that neuron, which gives it its electrical charge. Now, why am I saying that? Because the main one that we see mostly is sodium. Sodium is outside of the neuron. It's out, let's say this is the inside of the neuron. This is the axon. And those who don't know about neurons, don't worry about it because you'll get the meaning anyway. So inside of the neuron, there are some different, especially potassium. Potassium's heavily inside the neuron. That potassium charge is positive. Outside of the neuron, there is a lot of sodium. That sodium charge is positive. And so your neurons on the axon have ionic channel gateways, which are called voltage ion channel gateways. It's a big word. It basically means it has a gate for that specific element. So there is a gate just for sodium. Now, why am I bringing sodium up? Because sodium is representative of salt, okay? And I'm getting to Matthew 5.13. Matthew 5.13, and I'm getting into anesthesia and how anesthesia works. So in your neurons, outside of your neurons, you have neurons within your body, right? We have our central nervous system, which is mainly the brain. And then we have the peripheral nervous system, which is coming off from your spine as well into other branches and organs and muscles and all that. And so in those around those neurons are sodium. So when your neuron gets ready to have power and it has a charge and it has an effect, so you can feel, you can lift your fingers up, you can shake your hands, that is because sodium is coming in some of my neurons and I get electricity in those neurons and I can shake my hands because my brain is telling my hands to shake and wave. And I can do that because sodium is going into those neurons causing electricity. Is that not powerful? Because you're gonna get this in a minute. Guess how they do anesthesia? They do anesthesia by blocking those sodium channels. Do you know that there's some saltwater fish, as well as frogs in the Amazon that have a chemical compound that can cause paralysis or death because one thing, it blocks your salt, or can I say sodium channels. It blocks the sodium channels to your neurons so your body cannot move. And some people will die because they're not able to breathe and they suffocate because of that very thing. But this is what's absolutely wild because do you know with anesthesia, what they're doing is they're managing that channel of salt. And the reason you go to sleep and the reason you don't feel anything is because they manage that sodium channel on your neurons that they can do local anesthesia and you can go to the dentist and you can have sodium channels in that little area blocked to where you're numb and you don't feel anything so your neurons are not activated they're not charged you don't feel pain because that area is asleep is that not crazy we also see in the old testament that God got the priest to put salt on their food. And we also see where he made a salt covenant with King David. And so we're going to end here with Matthew 5, 13. And you're going to get this in a minute. About awake, awake, a sleeper. Because the salt represents the holiness of God in us. It represents the word. What the enemy will try to do is anesthetize us. He will try to block out the fact of the salt of the truth because that salt holiness 
is our strength. Holiness is our power. Is that not amazing? Matthew 5, 13, amen? So when we see salt, let's liken that to holiness. When we stop feeling and experiencing the fact that we are holy and have that new spiritual attitude, we forget about our condition. Let's do vice versa. When we forget that we are holy, we no longer experience holiness. We no longer have a spiritual mind. And instead, we are becoming of this world. So let's look at Matthew 5, 13. And this is where we'll end. Amen. Matthew 5, 13. Scripture says, You are the salt of the earth. But if salt has lost its taste, its strength, its quality, how can its saltiness be restored? It is good. It is not good for anything any longer, but to be thrown out and trodden underfoot by men. You are the light of the world, a city set on a hill that cannot be hidden, nor do men light a lamp and put it under a peck measure, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to the whole house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your moral excellence, your holiness, hallelujah, and your praiseworthy, noble, good deeds, and recognize and honor and praise, glorify your Father who is in heaven. Woo! Hallelujah. Do you understand this, saints of God? So the seat of your emotions inside of you is just like that sodium in our neurons. That sodium can become and does become the power, the electricity to how we live how we function day to day. How much more so should the holiness of God be in our spiritual walk? It is Him that they see. It is not us. We decrease our image. It decreases, hallelujah. And the image of God's glory, it increases. Does that mean you're perfect? Absolutely not. But does that mean that you're willing to put off the old nature? When God tells you, does that mean you're willing to dedicate your body to holiness? Dedicate your emotions. People think it's just our feelings. It's our lust in this body. Let me tell you what, if that is how you see it, the enemy is going to hypnotize you every time. It is your emotions. You have got to get in control. You have got to master your emotions. How does that look like? You pursue holiness and you tell your body, you body have been bought and paid for with a price and you don't get to feel and act like you want to feel. You don't get to hijack my free will. You don't get to have me bound up in a stronghold because the salt of God's word, woo, the holiness of his nature, hallelujah, has come upon me in Jesus' name. Amen. Woo! Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. I love you. You holy nation. You royal priesthood. Get ready. 2020 is going to be amazing. I love you. Goodbye. See you Thursday.